up guys it's your boy joe be more ravens online pardon the interruption we're in the process of making this into a bedroom slash nursery y'all know my baby boy my son's going to be born in september so we got to get ready but the ravens stuff will go back up somewhere as you see some of it behind me there in preparation for the 2013 season can't wait thursday night man ravens broncos uh donkey town usa man we're gonna get up there and we're gonna whip that ass put peyton on the ground that's our goal man to start off with a fresh and great start week one. It's going to be a great game, man. It's like, what, 15, 16 Sundays away? Um, I should say Thursdays. So I can't wait, man. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. Before we begin, though, my heart's uh, thoughts, prayers go out. Condolences to the people of Oklahoma, Moore, Oklahoma, and the entire Plain and Midwest area affected by this terrible tragedy, especially Moore, Oklahoma. 50-plus dead. A lot of them are children. I know one hill elementary school out there. Death toll could rise 100 plus. So, uh, man, my hearts go out to you guys. We don't get big ones here in Maryland. This time we had like an EF4 or 5 here. It was like eight years ago. We don't get them here. And when we do, you know, it's not that, again, it's not that often. You guys get them a lot out there. So, my hearts and prayers go out to you guys. Um, You know, it's tough. It is. But, you know, we are one nation. We are united. We are thousands of miles apart from Maryland, Oklahoma, and the surrounding areas, man. But uh, I got friends at Edmond. Um, they're okay out there from the love. You know, yesterday's tornado. And um, just, man, just thoughts and prayers to you guys, man. Uh, be strong and, and, you know, just united with you guys forever. That's how it is. We start with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, OTA started today. And I'm very interested to see who comes out of these OTAs going into camp as the guy we're going to focus on the most. And there's a potential there for a lot of people. Now, you hear about this defense, um, how we lost so many people, so many leaders, that we're going to be a, a lack of last year's. Um, I disagree. I think Baltimore has the potential to be even better, to be a devastating, hard-hitting, uh, potential Playmaking, play changing defense, and it starts in that backfield. Drafting Matt Elm, um, definitely the guy who can be the ball hog of this football team. He's not going to come in, step in Edward's shoes, and be the pick six ball hog that Edward was right off the bat. But the potential is there. You can tackle very well. The potential to mess up the quarterback's day and the receiver's day, um, a, a game changer. Um, of course, we got Ladarius Webb coming back. We know his skills, what he can do, man. He can tackle very well. Um, Kerry Williams is gone. A lot of people are happy about that. Um, it's really, uh, really interesting to see. And then, of course, the guy that I focus on the most, Corey Graham, man. Um, very, very interesting to see how he plays in this year, man. He had a phenomenal season last year, a lot in the playoffs as well. And um, I can't wait to see how he comes back and works um, with uh, with this backfield. You got, of course, adding Michael Huff there. So you got Michael Huff at safety who can work with Matt Elm. Um, he drafted Mark Anthony in the late rounds of the draft. And, of course, you got our corners. I can't wait to see them come back and play well. I think this backfield, again, has the potential. Our corners and our safeties would be game changers, um, if not better than when Ed Reed led it. And um, I love Ed Reed. I love what he's done. You know, nobody can ever play to his level, lead to his level. But the potential is there, and that's what I'm seeing. Um, you're going defense, man, these competitions. And we'll talk more about this in June and July, but competitions are going into camp. Of course, you got you know this this maybe Jamil McLean stepping in, taking off of Ray Lewis's spot. But then you got somebody like Arthur Brown who may be competing with Jamil McLean. Arthur, he's not a big guy, but he's going to hit you like a freight train. He can tackle. Tackling well is an understatement. This guy is an excellent tackler. Not to mention he likes to come around the edges and stop the runner in his path. Ravens struggled with that last year. Um, around the edges with the runner, he can close up the holes in the gaps pretty fast. So Arthur Brown, watch him and Jamil maybe go at it a couple times um, in camp. Of course, they drafted Brandon Williams. He's going to be a bigger competition for somebody like Chris Chanty from the uh, former New York Giants. Man, he's a leader. He can play well. He's a hell of a you know defensive tackle. But then you got somebody like Brandon Williams. Man, he ain't gonna hit you like a freight train. He's gonna hit you like a tank, man. This guy is a very good tackler. He loves to strip the football. Loves to go after the quarterback. Um, he's got that fierce mentality. That a very good leadership. Him. So he's going to be in competition as well uh, with uh, this, this veteran, Chris Chanty. So those two veterans, you know, you got Arthur Brown going after Jamil, maybe uh, Brandon going after uh, Chris Chanty. So watch that. Of course, Marcus Spears coming here competing. Um, Elvis Dumerville can't wait to get on the field, man. He's going to be, I think, the most dominant player, uh, you know, versus the Terrell Suggs and Hello Renata, of course. Um, can't wait to see them back and maybe, you know, Terrell taking over some good leadership off of Ray Lewis. Um, he's definitely going to miss like Terrell says, but Terrell Suggs has the ability there to be the next man up, to be the leader uh, on that team. And he already is, you know, at times. 
uh, straight up. Terrence Cody, you know, can't wait to see. What what, what Terrence Cody are we going to see in OTAs and in, in training camp? Are we going to see the, the regular, everyday Cody? Or are we going to see Mount Cody? Somebody that can stop them in their tracks. Somebody that can push the old offensive lineman out the way. Who can get to that ball from the center. So, definitely can't wait to see what he can do. And then, of course, Courtney Upshaw. to that rush to pass or type player scenario. So, I can't wait to see where he goes from there. Um, it, it's going to be very interesting on this defense, man. Uh, not to mention the rest of the guys that we got to come in here and compete in the uh, undrafted free agents, the drafted guys, and the veterans. So it's going to be very interesting. I think defense, man, with all the combinations we have, the, the, the potential, again, and I say I can't wait to see it because I definitely can't wait to see it, the potential for a very dominant, scary defense going into 2013. It's going to make all offenses uh, shrivel to the bones, man. I can't wait to see after week one and week two how the rest of the NFL reacts, if we can put it together well. Offense. Joe Flacco being the center of it all. Can he continue the Joe Flacco, the Joe Cool routine? Because, hey, look, he's a lead quarterback. He took us to a Super Bowl. I'm happy. He's not the top three quarterback. He's not the best quarterback in the league, but he is elite. That's my opinion. He's worth the money. I'm not going to get into the discussion, but can he continue being Joe Cool? He's been for these past, what, half a decade. So it's definitely uh, definitely interesting to see where he goes into 2013 as. Let's hope he doesn't come in here and just slump off the rest of his career. I don't see that happening, but you just never know because the boy's got a strong arm on him. He's got the potential there to be the best quarterback in the league, to compete with people like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and he has. Uh, that's what I like about him. So definitely can't wait to see him. And then the offensive line. One thing you got to look at for, you know, we know Marshall Yonda is going to be Marshall Yonda, man. Hell of a player. Could he be the best player on the team? That's up for debate. But Brent McKinney, are we going to see the McKinney of the slacker version or are we going to see the hardworking version? Because it all depends on what he's going to show up on campus. Um, shows up as a slacker, could be problems going into the 13. He shows up as a hard worker, you know, this offensive line could be sealed tight. And then, of course, ultimately, man, he, he's on here talking about Pro Bowls this year, Pro Bowls are bust. This is a hard working man. I said this when we drafted him. No doubt in my mind, he has the potential to be one of the best, if not the best, offensive lineman on this football team. The center position um, with Geno, um, I just uh, picked up a guy from free agency from the Colts, um, AJ, I think it was. So I definitely can't wait to see the center position go at it. Of course, Matt Burke did retire. Offensive line, man. If we can get this working right, we can get these young guys and some of these older guys to work again. Of course, Michael Orr, you know, working his thing. I think that protecting our, our star quarterback, man, it's not going to be a hard job at all if we can work together. Receiver position, man, I mean, you, you know what that is. Finding the replacement, the next man up for Anquan Bolden. You know, we couldn't get it in the draft. We couldn't get it um, in free agency. So next man up, Tory Jacoby, Joe Flacco. They got to work with these young kids, work with these veterans. The next man up routine, and that's how it's got to be. Could it be Reed? Could it be Thompson? Um, you know, uh, William? You just never know. You never know. So wide receiver is going to be one of the best positions to look forward to competitions um, in camp. Um, you know, Ray Rice doing his thing, man. I heard his house got broken into. Sorry about that, bro. Um, the fullback position, looking at that. Leach working with some of these young guys. <sighs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be decent, man. And of course, the tight ends, man. We love Dixon. We love Pitta. Talking about me putting him into a Pitta into a slot routine. So we'll see how that works out. Um, we'll say one thing before I go. Now listen. I'm not a part of the TTC no more. That does not mean that I won't whip your ass on camera. Can't whip it in person. We gotta keep the violence on the down low. Your boy Joe's a peaceful man. But, um, you know, talking about my football team. RRG, man, talking about the RRG falling apart. Man, the fucking TTC's falling apart. It's fell apart. Now, to the people on here who think it's great and fun, man, props to you. People have been on here rapping for five, six years, props to you. You know, that's what's up. Uh, but the RRG, man, no, it ain't what it used to be. We lost a lot of people, everybody from Perry, Ariana, Emily, G. Bentley, our founding fathers, Darren, uh, Pitch Black 52, D1 Redmond. Um, but Ravens Red Zone is still on here, man. He's the legends on here. Um, you still got Dave, you still got Mike, you still got Mikey, he's a new guy, Curtis, um, everybody else in between. And I'm still in here rapping. I'll still rep the RG, man. I'm going to rep the TTC, but I'll rep the RG. Don't, don't think for a minute I won't come back just to have a little fun with you. Um, the Steelers, man, they, they lost a lot of people. I don't even think, I think Steel Legends is the only one left on here. The Browns, pff, I mean, who the fuck ever said that? The Browns, who the fuck ever said they even had fans? The Bengals, and they got their fan base lost. Uh, Grew, lost, grew, lost, grew. Now they got some guys coming back um, on there. Donald, um, uh, the Bengals run this, um, and uh, one of the newer guys on here. Uh, A Train is another guy on there as well. So, uh, you know, got Bengals fans, they got their fans, man, but again, just like every fan base, they die off. Um, they come back, they die off, and um, that's just how it is. Um, that's what a lot of teams, man. I've known over 100, 150 people that have left the TTC in the past two years. It ain't what it used to be. And, you know, everybody just gets tired of it. I'm on here because I love talking sports. 
You know, I've been talking for fucking 15 minutes. And I still haven't found a way to shut up. So I, I love talking sports. I love talking trash. Um, as long as I'm no longer a part of TTC, which means no more of these hate week videos. But does not mean I'm like to come on here and have a little fun with you every once in a while. And I'll be here every week. I'll be here every week, man. They put me in the hospital and jail. I'll be here every week for you. It's your boy Joe. Be more Ravens online. Peace out, guys.